Let us begin this service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Those who want to save their life will lose it, Jesus said. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. As those who seek to follow faithfully, let us confess our sins to the Lord. giver of every good and perfect gift. We confess that we are imperfect. Our minds are filled with hate and prejudice. Our tongues are out of control. Our deeds do not bear witness to our faith. As sinners we stand condemned. We plead the merits of your perfect Son, Jesus Christ, who willed and spoke and did what you command. For our sakes he obeyed. For his sake we beg forgiveness. The will of God is your redemption. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name and for his sake I declare to you the full forgiveness of all of your sins. The Lord God is your helper. Who then can declare you guilty? We take up the cross as faithful followers. Amen. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you.
Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament lesson is from Zechariah chapter 9, beginning at verse 9. I hope you make some connections between this and the gospel lesson. Here we go. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. The epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. He's talking to us. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the epistle lesson. <laughs> John chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Here ends the Gospel lesson. Let us now profess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for the children's lesson.
Well, oh, today's children's lesson is going to be more like a big kid lesson and more like an adult lesson because something unique and kind of fun happened at confirmation class. Do you remember what that was? Does anything unique and fun happen at confirmation? Well, I think so. What's that? The picture. Which picture? No, not that one. No. You had to be there for that one. No, we're not going to talk about that. Remember, we're talking about the creed, and it says, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And you're like, you guys are like, what's with the again? And I said, well, that's a great question. What is with the again? Because he only rose what? Once. And he only died what? Once. Very good. Very, very good. So, what's up with this again stuff in the creed that we say every Sunday? Well, it can also mean in addition to. In addition to that, he also rose from the dead. Greek is an interesting language. English is an interesting language. Another example of this that happens uh, is in John chapter 10, listen to verse 18. Jesus says this, no one takes it from me, it is my life, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. In addition to laying down my life, I also have the power to take it up again. So when you guys are saying those words, think in addition to. But the word again, is an interesting word, isn't it? Again and again. We come to church again and again. Why? Because my parents made me. <laughs> and that's because they love you. And you should be very thankful. One day you will be if you already are. But we come to church again and again. Why? To worship, very good. We want to thank God for what he's done for us. You know, John? We come to get our what's forgiven. Our sins, because we are sinning again and again and again. We say in our head, I'm never going to do that again. And what do we do? We do it again. <laughs> Fill in the blank, whatever that is in your life. We, we do it again and again. God doesn't want us doing it again and again. And we get angry at ourselves when we do it again and again. And thank God we get to come to a place like this and hear a guy like this tell you that no matter what you've done, your sins are forgiven. And he will never stop loving you. He'll love you again and again and again and he'll forgive you again and again and again until you are with him forever in heaven. That's a great lesson for us. Because people are going to say mean things about you. People are going to do mean things to you. It happens, doesn't it? And what does Jesus want us to do for those people? Again and again and again. Forgive them very good. Wait till you guys get married. You'll be doing it again and again and again. You'll be asking for it again and again. That's just one example. But you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And no matter how many times, no matter how badly you feel, your Savior will never stop looking. And he, he's going to tell it to you again and again and again. And hopefully when you guys are big, you start going to church, get your own job, move away. You find a church that tells you the simple message that you are forgiven again and again and again because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Oh, isn't it nice to know that? Oh, it's just wonderful. We're forgiven. Now, go out there and forgive those people at school who might not be too cool to you. Forgive those brothers and sisters who might 
not be nice all the time. Forgive moms and dads too, because we need forgiving as well. Can you do that? You can, because you have faith in Jesus. You're an awesome young man and young lady, and don't you forget that. All right. Let's do this. Let's continue with the next hymn. Jesus is alive, for crying out loud. 
You believe that a dead guy came back to life? You guys are crazy. You guys are full of something. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Well, today, I hope we walk away realizing that Jesus emptied himself. Emptied himself so that you and I could be full. And we'll talk about what that is as we continue. The text this morning is the epistle lesson. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the text. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us through them. Your word is the truth. Amen. Well, another reason Christians maybe get made fun of a lot of is because what are we often talking about? At least a good Christian church. We're talking about sins. Oh man, why do you Christians got to talk about sin all the time for crying out loud? Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about something else. Listen to verse 5 of our text. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. How are you guys doing with that one? Your attitude, not the person next to you, you, me. Our attitude should be that of Jesus Christ. And let's talk briefly about Christ's attitude. Did he ever have a bad one? No, he was always right. He was always loving. He was always sincere. He was always kind. He had a sacrificial attitude with his time, with his talents, and with his very life. We donate blood every once in a while, don't we? But he donated it all. He gave up his life for you. Our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Wow. Well, what is our attitude like? Jesus was full of compassion, love, sacrifice, and we are full of ourselves. We'll put it politely, won't we? We're full of ourselves. I wrote down a few things that we are full of. I had to write them down because I, I couldn't remember them all. All right. We know we're full of ourselves when we don't empathize with people. No one has it as bad as us anyway, so what, what, what's the point? It's all about us. We're always taking and never giving. That we've been guilty of that. Sure. We don't ask for help. That's a sign of being full of yourself. Well, for good little Germans and Norwegians and Northern Europeans, it's a sign of, you know, we're, we can handle everything ourselves. Well, it's pride, everybody. We don't listen to others. We want it done our way. Nobody else can do it as good as us because we're full of ourselves. We exaggerate because we want to look like we caught the biggest fish. We want to be the best. We gossip because we're full of ourselves. We want everybody else to look worse than us. You're the exception to the rules. Those no U-turn signs in Naples <laughs> that we've all just conveniently said, well, oh, no, not today. I'm the exception to that. Yeah, that's us. We don't admit we're wrong. 
that a sign of being full of yourself? It sure is. And then the last one. Your phone is full of pictures of yourself. <laughs> oh, busted. Yesterday at church, there, were, there, were, there was a brother, sister, sibling, siblings there. And when I said that one, the little brother went, mm. <laughs> I had his sister. Oh, All right. We are full of ourselves. God tells us to be full of Jesus. Our attitude should be that of Christ. My goodness, I fail at that. And I think you guys are in the same boat as I am. Let's listen as the attitude of Jesus is described in our text. Listen to verses 6 through 8. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Not just any death, one of the worst deaths imaginable, death on a cross. Did you know that you confess those very same words every Sunday? In the what? The Apostles' Creed, very good. Or the Nicene Creed, if there's communion that day. Listen to what you say every Sunday. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. In confirmation class, we call all that his humiliation. The humiliation of Jesus. Him lowering himself. Remember that sermon from Caleb a while ago? He taught us that the word, does anybody eat hummus here? Oh yeah, I love hummus. I love it. it comes from the Latin word humus, which means soil or dirt. And humility means you are lowering yourself. You're getting in the dirt. And that's what Jesus did. He leaves the glory of heaven and comes down to this. This filth and this muck. He leaves the expanse of the universe and goes into that womb for crying out loud and then he grows up and he suffers and dies, humiliates himself, naked on the cross, all torn up by those whips. Why did he do it? For you. And then he does something else. Right after that, listen to the next uh, three verses from our text. After he does all that humiliating stuff, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In confirmation class, that's called the exaltation, isn't it? And you, you recite that every Sunday too. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. That's his exaltation. He descended into hell. Is that part of the exaltation? It is. Because he went down there to exalt and say, I told you guys. I am the promised Messiah. I am the Savior. But you wouldn't believe me. He ascends into heaven, sits on the right hand of God the Father. He is exalted. He does all of those things, his humiliation and his exaltation, for you. He is our substitute. And when God looks at us, he sees Jesus, he sees the humiliation, he sees the price that was paid, and he sees the exaltation as well. You stand before God, a forgiven, righteous, awesome man and woman. Listen 
Just some wonderful verses. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Because of all that Jesus did for you, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. That means you are completely forgiven for all the times you didn't empathize with someone because you were too busy, too self-consumed, too cool. You're forgiven for always taking and not giving. You're forgiven for not asking for help when you should have. You're forgiven for not listening to others. You're forgiven for always wanting it done your way. You're forgiven for all those exaggerations, for all the gossip that hurt people. You're forgiven for thinking you're the exception to those traffic rules in Naples, Greg Schmidt. <laughs> You're forgiven for all the times you didn't admit you were wrong. And you're forgiven for wasting all that time taking pictures of yourself or crying out loud. You are completely forgiven, folks. And Jesus emptied himself of all of his glory and filled it with all of our sins and took them away. And now he fills you up with his glory, with his exaltation, with his forgiveness, and with his power. Oh. When you're baptized, the Bible tells us clearly, you are clothed with Christ. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus' fulfillment of his humiliation and his exaltation. You're covered with it. That's what God sees. If I ask you this question, is Jesus Lord, what would you answer? Is Jesus Lord? Okay, do you know why you're able to say that? No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. That means you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. I'll tell you what else here. Good stuff here. You're your full of here. There's no getting around with chuckle on that phrase, is there? But there's something better here. It's Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. This is us. Listen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what's in us now because of Jesus and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. You know, there's one, well, the whole text gets my attention, but verse 11 is inspiring to me. It's one of the reasons I became a pastor. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. When Jesus comes, you and I are going to bow. And we're going to bow in joy, in honor, and in complete relief. Ah, oh, heaven's our home. Isn't it awesome? But there are going to be a lot of people, folks, who are going to be bending their knees in sheer terror, confusion, and sadness. Because when he comes, it will be too late if they aren't filled with the Holy Spirit, if they cannot say Jesus is Lord. What do you think you're here to do until you go to heaven? Play golf. <laughs> Play pickleball like everybody else in the well, Sure, enjoy those things. I do. 
but we're here to do something far greater. You have been filled with Jesus for a purpose, and that is to let those fruits of the Spirit out to those poor people who don't know who Jesus is. So that when they bend their knees, it's in faith and hope and love and not in sadness, in terror. Next time someone's making fun of you because of your faith, what are you going to do? Get angry? Maybe inside a little bit. Love them. Show them Christ. What are you going to do when people hurt you? Love them. Show them Christ. What did Jesus do when they were pounding the nails into his body? Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Our attitude should be the same as that of Jesus. Get out of Jesus' way. He wants to work his attitude through you. Get out of his way and let the forgiveness come. Let the love come. Let the joy be seen by everybody in your life. So that when they bend their knee, it is in glory, laud, and honor for their sake. Amen, everybody. Please arise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus.
for occasions to serve and be served, for fellowship with believers in our congregation and in our synod. Help us to rejoice in these blessings, dear Lord, and to use them faithfully. Jesus Christ, Lord of the Church, you give grace to your people by calling us to be your witnesses in the world. Open our eyes to the mission opportunities that we have in our community. Give us the energy and resources necessary to, necessary to share Christ's love with those in our community. In the hurting eyes of the lonely, in the pained eyes of the sick, and in the searching eyes of the lost, help us to see your face and to serve others as we would serve you. Awaken us to the opportunities you give to proclaim your message of love. Holy Spirit, giver of life, through word and sacrament, bestow on us the wisdom and power we need to witness clearly and to act boldly. Help us to speak the truth and love to all those at home, school, work, and church, to give the reason for the hope we have and to conduct ourselves with gentleness and respect. Set our hearts on fire as we work and witness for Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we pray for a family member, an acquaintance, a neighbor, or a friend who does not believe in you, or whose faith is weak or troubled. Thank you for blessing our Savior Lutheran Church with men and women who are willing to proclaim your word. Strengthen them in this challenging and vital work. Keep them and their loved ones in your care and let nothing hinder their work. By the power of the gospel, restore their spirits each day so that they do not lose heart as they serve us and others. Move us to support them with our sincere prayers and generous offerings. Wherever your word is proclaimed, O Lord, grant it success let your kingdom come to us and others so that we and many more might join the assembly of saints and angels to sing your praise forever. Savior of all, hear our prayer and help us in our mission. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace.
friend. Great to see all of you. Thank you, Bells. Very nice. Very, very nice. I always love it. Oh, so, when I, I, I don't keep my cell phone on me when I'm up here. I put it in here. And I put it on silent, just in case somebody texts. Nobody ever texts me or calls until this morning. <laughs> had a couple of texts from a couple of buddies who went to the University of Oregon. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> How are everyone's brackets doing? <laughs> Not too well? Man, man. Is it asking too much to be the first person to have a perfect bracket before they go? Before they go? <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's possible. Somebody can do it. Jesus. All right. Um, any first-time visitors with us this morning who wouldn't mind telling us where they're from? There was that little girl who came up for children. <laughs> awesome having you here. Awesome having you. So where, where are you guys from? Fort Myers, she actually came to Bible study. Her Bible vacation. She, she came to, to vacation Bible school? Awesome. Great to have you here. Gotcha. Is he from Fort Myers? All right. Awesome. We don't get people from Fort Myers. We get them from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Minnesota. Yeah. Awesome having you here. Anyone else? All right. Well, there's a lot of hands to shake. Mama.